Imagine you suddenly disappear one day, leaving no trace behind. No, this isn't a movie. This is exactly what happened with Paula Jean Weldon, and this is one of the most mysterious disappearances in the whole American history. No one ever found her. Was it a kidnapping, a secret that Paula hid from the world, or something spooky at a nearby place called the Bennington Triangle? Let's find out what really happened. December 1st, 1946. A normal winter day in Bennington, a town in Vermont, Paula Jean Weldon, an 18-year-old college student at Bennington College, took a break from her studies and decided to go for a hike along the Long Trail, a famous path through Vermont's lush woods. Little did anyone know that this hike would turn Paula into a mystery that scares people for decades. Paula Jean Weldon was born on October 19, 1928, in Stamford, Connecticut. She was the eldest of William Archibald Weldon and Jean Douglas Weldon's four daughters. Paula spent her formative years in Stamford. It's hard to imagine now, but back then, it was a world recovering from World War II, filled with hope and new beginnings. Paula and her sisters had a comfortable life thanks to her father, a well-respected engineer, and her mother, a homemaker. The Weldon home was described as lively and loving, fostering Paula's artistic and independent spirit. Friends and family recall her as not only bright, but also extremely creative, frequently expressing herself through art and writing. Fast forward to Paula's teenage days, when she takes admission at Bennington College in Vermont. Bennington's liberal arts program was a perfect fit for Paula's artistic interests. She studied art here, engaging herself in the world of colors, shapes, and expressions. But Paula was known for her love of the outdoors, as well as her love of books and art. She couldn't get enough of hiking, exploring, and simply being in nature. This love of adventure becomes a key piece in the puzzle of her disappearance later on. People who knew Paula describe her as someone who lived life to the fullest. She was outgoing and friendly, and she had a large group of friends at college. They did, however, notice her independence. Paula wasn't the type to go with the flow. She preferred to go on solitary walks to clear her mind. Despite her popularity and sociability, Paula valued her alone time. This duality in her personality, the social butterfly and the introspective loner, reveals the complexities of her personality. Friends remember Paula as someone who could light up a room while also being deeply thoughtful and introspective. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary in the days leading up to her disappearance. Paula was going about her college life as usual, attending classes, socializing with friends, and pursuing her passion for the arts. But were there warning signs hidden behind the normalcy? Was Paula planning something? or was her disappearance as unplanned as it appears? Let's go back in time to that tragic Sunday morning. Paula awoke in a room at Bennington College on an ordinary morning, but what was going on in her head? Was it just another day for her, or did she notice something out of the ordinary? She began her day as usual, with breakfast, chatting with friends, and the usual college routine. But there was one difference. Paula seemed excited to go on a hike, which is something she enjoys. She even invited a few friends, but they declined due to prior obligations. Paula, determined, decided to go on this hike by herself. Paula was seen getting ready for her hike with a passion. She wore a red jacket, jeans, and sneakers, which were suitable for the cold weather but not for a long hike in rough terrain. A beautiful gold wristwatch in her hand becomes an important clue later. Paula told her roommate that she planned to hike on the long trail or somewhere near Glastonbury Mountain before leaving. She stepped out of her dorm room, unknowingly into the pages of history, with a quick goodbye. Paula's last confirmed sighting was along the long trail near Glastonbury Mountain. The witnesses described seeing a young woman who looked like Paula, walking confidently but seemingly unaware of the approaching danger. Paula did not return as the day went. There was initially no reason for worry. After all, Paula was known for her love of long walks. Worry increased as night fell and there was no sign of her. Her roommate was expecting her back for dinner, but Paula's bed was empty. Something was clearly wrong by the next morning. Paula Jean Weldon disappeared without a trace. The next day, the alarm rang and the college was filled with a sense of urgency. Friends and college officials began a hurried search in the nearby areas where Paula had been known to hike. The local police were called, and what began as a search for a missing student quickly turned into a full-fledged investigation. But here's the problem. There were no hints, no leads, nothing. Paula seemed like she stepped into thin air. The lack of evidence was both confusing and disturbing. What happened to Paula? What happened to her while she was on the trail? There were many questions, but there were no answers. The local authorities and community acted immediately after Paula's disappearance was confirmed. Bennington College, local police, and volunteers from the surrounding area formed search parties. It was an enormous movement with a single goal in mind, to find Paula. The initial search focused on the long trail and nearby areas where Paula was last seen. Teams searched through dense woods, rocky terrain, and every 
nook and cranny they could find. Helicopters hovered above them, giving an aerial view of the vast wilderness. It was a race against the clock, with each passing second increasing the anxiety of people. But this was not easy. The Green Mountains' rough terrain was a significant obstacle. Thick forests, steep slopes, and weather fluctuations made the search more difficult. The lack of modern search technology worsened the situation. Keep in mind that this was 1946. There were no thermal cameras or GPS tracking, just old-fashioned boots on the ground searching. Because of the lack of immediate communication, coordination was slower, which often resulted in repeated efforts and delays. The search area got wider as the days turned into weeks with no signs of Paula. Authorities alerted neighboring states and the FBI. The disappearance of Paula Jean Weldon was making headlines and capturing the whole nation's attention. Despite this increased effort, clues were rare. There was no clothing, no footprints, no definitive evidence of Paula. It was as if she disappeared into the air. The emotional impact on the Bennington community was huge. Paula wasn't just a missing person, she was a part of the community. Her disappearance had an impact on everyone, from her classmates and professors to local shopkeepers and residents. Families in the area were particularly hit hard. The sense of security that small-town Bennington once had was shattered as parents held their children closer. The mystery of Paula's disappearance had a ripple effect on the community. The initial search fervor began to wane as weeks turned into months, finding Paula was becoming extremely unlikely. The size of the search parties decreased and the daily headlines faded away. But there was still hope. Paula's family, friends, and a dedicated group of volunteers continued their search, thinking she could still be found. But the question of what happened to Paula Jean Weldon grew bigger. Abduction is one of the most discussed theories. Was Paula kidnapped? Because of the lack of physical evidence, this theory gained traction. Some believe that Paula may have encountered someone with criminal intent on her hike and got kidnapped. But who could the kidnapper be? Is this a stranger passing through? Was it someone she knew? Well, nobody knows. Another theory is that Paula willingly disappeared to start a new life. Was she dissatisfied? Well, some people speculate that her independence and adventurous spirit were indicators that she planned her own disappearance. The idea of Paula taking a new identity and moving to a different part of the country or even abroad is interesting, but there is no concrete evidence to support it. There are no records or credible sightings to back up this theory, making it a fascinating but unproven possibility. A more likely explanation is that Paula became lost or injured in the wilderness. The Green Mountains are vast and can be dangerous, especially for a solo hiker. Could she have fallen and been unable to call for help? Maybe she got off the path and couldn't find her way back. The extensive searches done in the days after her disappearance make it confusing. With so many people searching the area, wouldn't there have been some trace of Paula? Some have linked Paula's disappearance to the Bennington Triangle, a location near where she was last seen with a track record of mysterious disappearances. Is Paula's case part of a larger, deadly pattern? The Bennington Triangle theory was known for its supernatural and paranormal activities. We'll talk about this later in the video. The theories range from the ordinary to the extraordinary, with each giving a possible explanation without a conclusion. Despite the fact that Paula has been missing for decades, her story continues to resonate. However, sometimes the solutions are as difficult as the mystery itself. Imagine yourself a parent whose child disappeared without a trace. This was Paula's parents William and Jean Weldon's harsh reality. The disappearance of their eldest daughter turned their world upside down. The Weldons were completely focused on finding Paula. In their desperate search for answers, they led many search efforts, worked tirelessly with the police, and even consulted physics. Every interview and inquiry for information showed their pain. The uncertainty, the endless what-ifs, haunted them for the rest of their lives. Paula's disappearance also left an impact on Bennington College. The college community was shocked to its heart. The college increased security and created stricter protocols for reporting missing students to ensure student safety. Paula's case became an example of caution, a reminder of life's uncertainty and the importance of community awareness. The disappearance of Paula disturbed Bennington, a once peaceful and closed together community. People who used to feel safe have now locked their doors at night. Parents hugged their children even more tightly. Also, the case brought the community together in unexpected ways. Volunteers who participated in the search formed strong relationships because they shared a common goal. Annual memorials and gatherings kept Paula's memory alive, creating a shared determination to find the truth. Now we'll be talking about the Bennington Triangle. It's a legend, and it could hold an answer to Paula's disappearance. The Bennington Triangle, named after paranormal author Joseph A. Citro, refers to a region in Vermont known for a series of mysterious disappearances between 1945 and in 1950. People talk about this region in paranormal tales and legends. The Bennington Triangle mystery goes beyond simple disappearances. Hikers have reported feeling lost, compasses turning wrong, 
and strange lights in the sky. It's a place where the natural and supernatural appear to merge. The case of Paula Jean Weldon is just one of several mysterious disappearances in the Bennington Triangle. Mitty Rivers, a 74-year-old experienced hunter who disappeared in 1945, and James Tedford, who disappeared from a bus in 1949, are a couple of instances. Each case is unique, but they all have one thing in common, no trace. These disappearances have led to a number of theories, from alien abductions to multi-dimensional portals. While these may sound like science fiction, they have become part of the Triangle's mythology. Experts have proposed simpler explanations for the Bennington Triangle's mysteries. Even the most experienced hiker could become lost in the dense forests and mountainous terrain, and in the harsh weather, the area becomes a dangerous place. The Bennington Triangle has become a cultural phenomenon, affecting both local and global culture. It's a story about our irrational fear of the unknown. The triangle reminds us of our weaknesses, our fear of being lost, and our need to find answers. The mysteries of the triangle connect psychologically with our fascination with the paranormal. So, the Bennington Triangle remains a mystery in Vermont's history. It's an area that continues to attract adventure tourists, paranormal fans, and those looking to understand the unexplainable. Sounds too deep, right? The triangle's past and Paula Jean Weldon's disappearance within it became a reminder of the mysteries that still exist in our world. It encourages us to question, investigate, and never give up on finding the truth, no matter how difficult it may be. Now, let's see what the modern tools and techniques can reveal about this decades-old mystery. Since Paula disappeared, appeared in 1946, the field of forensic and investigation has achieved remarkable progress. We have gained access to technologies that were once considered science fiction, DNA analysis, digital footprints, and enhanced search capabilities. Investigators use these technologies to look into Paula's case hoping to find clues that were missed previously. DNA analysis of any discovered items, digital reconstructions of the scene, and extensive data analysis can give new perspectives on the cold case. The problem is that the passage of time has erased many potential possibilities. In modern investigations, the first step is to re-examine the existing evidence. Old case files, statements from witnesses, and any physical evidence found at the time are studied with new technology. Also, investigators look for mistakes or missed details in the original investigation. Could a small clue or a misinterpreted piece of evidence hold the secret? Digital footprints can be a good source of information in today's world, but this didn't exist at Paula's time. So despite all the advancements, the disappearance of Paula remains a mystery. The search for Paula may have faded with time, but her memory remains on as a reminder of the mysteries that still surround us, the stories that remain untold, and the journeys that remain unfinished. Paula's story is more than just a disappearance. It represents our search for truth and meaning. And with that, we end our investigation into Paula's mystery. While her story remains unresolved, it continues to inspire and fascinate. It reminds us of the power of hope and a strength of the human spirit in the face of tragedy.